Okay, I'm going to slowly, slowly make a start. Um, so welcome everyone to the Sound Arts Lecture Series here at London College of Communication um, in association with CRISAP, the Creative Research into Sound Arts Practice Centre, also at LCC. As you know, my name is Mark Peter Wright. I'm the acting course leader on the BA Sound Arts course and member of CRISAP. Um, and I'm very, very happy that Leah Roger is here today to share her wonderful, wonderful practice um, with us all. And I'll introduce Leah soon. But as always, um, I'm going to do my housekeeping bits amongst the sirens of London. Um, so, and I should say, this is the last lecture of the term for those of us in term time. So um, it's, it's got a celebratory vibe to it today, I feel. Um, as always, a reminder, this is a, a, a unique space. We have students across BA, MA and PhD. We also have members of the public. Please do um, put your full name in the username so we can identify you. That's for both um, students and guests, external guests. Um, yeah, the chat messaging is archived, as I say, every week. Um, I think your microphones are off anyway, but just keep microphones off until um, you need to ask a question. Um, and that the sessions are recorded. Specifically for students um, on the BA Sound Arts course, this is your wonderful QR code for attendance today. Um, scan that. The password is 307. Uh, ZPR. I will put that in the chat afterwards. Do not worry because that's about to disappear. Um, but I'll put it in the chat for you to use. And I think today we were talking beforehand, you know, keen to actually have questions throughout the talk if, if needed. So as always, let's use the chat actively. Let's use that space to kind of think with and write questions. Questions can be very straightforward, just wanting to know more about a certain part of the practice or project. Um, but if you have questions, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll kind of stop and pull them in and pick them up as and when and maybe there's a collation of questions we can address sort of in one go and, and move on from there. But let's let's see how we get on with that. But but do do use that chat function. And let's if we can, let's try and keep that um, keep that active rather than bottling everything up for the end uh, in one go. And it's the last lecture of the term. So let's have people coming on the mic and speaking their question if possible. Um, I'll give you a direct message or something like this if you want to um, speak your question vocally. If not, I can obviously field the question. Quick thing, little announcement for next term while we're here. Um, we are going to be in person, which is very exciting. The first time in um, two and a half years probably. Um, there is one online uh, session with Christoph and Cohen, um, but there's a, a wonderful array of people coming next term. We're going to be in Lecture Theatre B, and I think we're all very excited about this. So that's a bit of a heads up for students and for public that this is coming next term. Okay, so <laughs> our guest for today um, is Maya. And I'm just going to read Maya's um, bio very briefly and just, just hand over so you can actually share your work and I can stop talking. <laughs> um, so Maya is a, a sound artist, sound designer uh, for film and installation. And her work explores the sonic poetics of the landscape through field recordings and active listening performances. Exploring human, non-human relations, she tries to inspire ecological change with environmental and empathetic listening. She believes in the importance of participatory projects in order to share knowledge and personal experience through sound. Um, coming from a science and technical background, she spent the last year of Masters in the Transdisciplinary Studies Programme at Zurich University of the Arts, where um, she developed her approach to sound. And I won't go through the list of sort of um, galleries and exhibitions because there's a lot to go through but I will mention that um, last year um, you received the Pierre Schaeffer Prize didn't you I think this is for the piece uh, Birds and Wires. Yeah we're gonna listen to it I think. Okay. So I'm gonna stop talking and hand over to you thank you so much um, yeah looking forward to this and everyone do use the chat 
let's get the questions going and keep it ongoing. Thank you again. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'm just yeah, gonna share my screen. I don't have such a fancy presentation. I only have a PDF that I will go through. Um, yep. I tried to find um, a title because, uh, as you will see, there there is there is a lot of voice uh, in my practice, and we go at the uh, yeah quite fast to more what we call maybe nature sound or at least um, yeah just we go into the bush right and so i try to yeah to make some groups of um, different projects that respond to each other and that will also depict my research um, because I mean, I just graduated last year, but I've been working since yeah four years as a independent uh, artist, freelancer, but also working a lot for movies and yeah film installations, etc. So today I'm just going to share my um, my work as a solo, like what what I do on my own. Um, but of course, this is fed by the. Um, oh, there is already a, a message. Ah, yeah, okay. This is all fed by collaborations that I have, or yeah, artists that I that I work the um, sounds for their photo project, or I mean, voila. This is a, a collection. It's, it's a bit of a mosaic of um, what I'm what I've been doing. Uh, and yes, please uh, ask questions uh, if you have uh, if you have uh, anything to say or if you want to have uh, I don't know a precision on something. I apologize also for my French accent, which is very loud. Um, but yeah, if you don't understand also what I'm saying, just let me know. And the first project I would like to share with you. Um, so. We're going to start with the voice because um, uh, I don't know, like it's been weeks that I, I have the, the post it on my desk saying that I miss the work now in my voice, in my the, the voice in my work. I, I had uh, such a long time working with this with, um, yeah, with the emotion that we have, but also the, um, the different tools for translations and also social communication with WhatsApp messages. I do a lot of vocals. Like it was, it's very present in my everyday life. And this is a, maybe just a small piece. It's just two minutes. It's a very simple recording of a translator in, to a translator. Uh, I, it's kind of an homage also to, to Alvin Lucie sitting in a room uh, where I, I yeah I say a sentence in a trans yeah in a translator that is translating in Spanish and then I'm repeating what I'm saying in the translator and it's retranslating again at, and at some point it comes into a loop and this was just a, a small kind of a small exercise for my for myself uh, to see how the how the machine is. Uh, is uh, yeah is hearing uh, my accent or not? If I do like this, you also see my web pages, right? Can someone just ask answer me on that? Oh no. Um, no. Okay, well that's good. <laughs> We don't want you to see it. Okay, Aujourd'hui, je fais à manger. Today I make food. Ah merde, je vais en espagnol. Espagnol. Espagnol, soy una liebre o soy... Espagnol, soy una liebre o una tortuga. Rapidula. Français. Français. Rapidula. Aujourd'hui, je vais faire un manger. 
Aujourd'hui, je vais faire un manger. Hoy voy a hacer un comer. Hoy voy a hacer un comer. Roy voyage sa grand-mère. Roy viaja a su abuela. Roy viaja a su abuela. Su abuela. Aquí está. Aquí está. Aquí está. Que llega tarde. Que llega tarde. Que está tarde. Que es retardado. Que es retardado. Que la secretaria. Que la secretaria. Que la que la secretaria. Que la secretaria. Que es 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 la secretaria. Okay, and then it goes again and again into into this loop where the translation is actually not changing at all between French and Spanish. So it was just a, a small exercise to find the limit point where the two languages are interpreted as the same input for this application. Um, it might sound a bit blurry, um, but this, um, this uh, small um, sound, it's not even a piece, it's just something that I, I've been trying was uh, for me the, the start of a, um, of a research about um, yeah about the the different communication the different uh, identities that we have uh, through our speech uh, with our emotions with our with um, uh, our accent with uh, the the yeah the sonic identity that we that we have uh, through our voice and this led to an, another project uh, which is called Ghost Me about the um, yeah the the digital communication you know when you go on whatsapp and you can see that someone has been seeing your messages but this person is not responding for example or that you can see this even though you don't want to see it you can see that uh, someone has been uh, connected at some like at a speci specific time but then like you're spying on the others despite yourself like it's, it's not a, a wish to, to do that but just the, the application is like always reminding you that uh, um like it's yeah like uh, the the communication might not be fluid and yeah i wanted to to use this um frustration and the the phenomenon of just Ghost, ghosting people. I don't know if you are familiar with this term, um, but basically you've been ghosted uh, when someone that you had a specific uh, relation to, even though it was just digital. Uh, at, at, yeah, on a certain moment, this person is not responding to you anymore, and you're just disappearing to to this person. You're you're just becoming a ghost, right? And this was my first, I don't know, attempt as a, um, yeah, to, to do a piece that is shown somewhere. So this was in Belgium uh, in 2018. I wanted to have uh, this modified telephone that was ringing by itself. So you have to imagine a, a room um, quite large where you have a lot of reverb and the telephone is just ringing and the audience can answer. and. I created this uh, persona of uh, of someone uh, explaining why he's not answering uh, anymore. And then you were able to leave a message to someone who is not uh, answering you. And so I got a collection of different messages. I think it was exhibited for like three days only. And I had like 80 um, messages of just people um, yeah, leaving some very 
intimate sometimes or very angry or just jokes, messages about um, this not answering phenomenon. And this I can also share some uh, examples. I had a limit of time, I think it was like 20 or 30 seconds per message that you could leave. So maybe we can listen to uh, two or three, but it's in French. I'm very sorry <laughs> about that. Um, but voilà, just to, to show you, it's, yeah, the, what remains from this piece, from this piece is a, a collection of, um, yeah, solitudes of different loneliness, uh, from the audience. Um, okay. So I go through some messages. Ouais, salut. Um, je sais que tu as décidé que ce serait mieux si on se parlait pas pendant un petit temps. Et que j'étais d'accord, mais en réalité c'est plus dur que ce que je pensais et, et tu me manques et, et pour tout te dire j'ai même un peu peur. Et j'espère que le temps que tu as voulu prendre t'aura été utile et j'espère que tu auras décidé euh, au final que... Salut Mathilde, euh, c'est Louis. Je te laisse un message pour te dire que, je sais pas si tu te rappelles, mais une fois on était à la même soirée ensemble. Euh, et la veille on était déjà à une soirée ensemble, on s'était embrassé. Et cette fois-ci t'as fait juste comme si rien s'était passé, c'était bizarre. Et si tu veux qu'on parlait, en parler, ça me ferait plaisir. Voilà. Salut Dominique je laisse un petit message parce que je sais qu'à partir d'aujourd'hui tu, tu me répondras plus et sauf que t'as pas le choix et alors je voulais te dire que je pensais je pensais très fort à toi et, et que ici on va faire la fête en, en honneur et, et on va on va boire des coups et on va rire et on va fêter la vie je t'embrasse ah genre, euh, salut Colo, euh, comment ça va bon, En fait j'en ai marre de te parler parce que... Voilà. Donc euh, voilà, c'est tout. Je vais te laisser et puis euh, tant pis pour toi. Ok. Um. Yeah. Yeah, Mark is, yeah, I mean, the, um, yes, indeed, the work is, is also in an archive is, um, for me, what was beautiful. I mean, I really kept the microphone of the old telephone. So it, it has its own timber, which is very old. And I wanted to have something that really goes away from the aesthetic of the everyday, um, instant messages that we have. Um, and I think it keeps, um, yeah, this kind of like a vintage touch. Um, and also we have all the different voices and what they say. I mean, I don't know if you could hear, uh, even though you don't understand French or some of you do, I know, <laughs> um, but yeah, we have very different, uh, emotional uh levels as well and for me it was really nice really surprising to to see that the audience was able to share so intimate part of themselves and what you could do also through the telephone was to listen to different messages like we set up so you see in this black part of the table here uh we had uh yeah just a computer modifying the the telephone uh, yeah, with a small uh, PD patch, etc., and um, and you could hear uh, the different messages like on um, random uh, things, random choices, basically. And yeah, um, for me, this piece also leads to to another one, which is way more conceptual, as it's my master thesis from Louis Lumière, where I was studying in Paris, but. Um, yeah, I think it was the start to just um, imagine voice or voice as an object in in the room, you know, like how do you 
think of it as a as as an entity for for an exhibition or for an experience uh, and the sensory auditory experience that also deals with uh, something social or relating to um, yeah some specific event or whatever um uh, meeting that uh okay i'm just reading the messages okay <laughs> I will just go to the um, next one. Um, this was really, yeah, this is a one year <laughs> project that uh, I did for for my, my master's, <clears throat> focusing on voice, as you can see in the title. Um, yeah, I was trying to combine those, um, this uncanny feeling that you have with uh, an artificial voice and to to have it very close to my identity it was the time where you could you know go online and make a vocal clone of your of yourself you had uh, stuff like lyrebird and, and different companies that were offering you to just say different sentences like reading and then they were creating a clone that was speaking like you and i just did a kind of a market uh, you know, research where I tried different online tools, compare them uh, in English and in French. And then I had the chance to work with um, Nicolas Aubin, which is uh, who is a um, voice, uh, yeah, voice uh, researcher uh, at IRCAM in Paris, where he developed a text to speech um, synthesis program, um, which now, since then, uh, in, like embedded uh, deep learning into his uh, research. And I recorded uh, hours and hours of my own voice, um, first with very small sentences that I was also writing because I had, I had to feed the algorithm. So I had to have one audio file per sentence and attached to the text file. So the synthesized voice is actually, it's concatenative synth synthesis. So basically you have all the phonemes of the French uh, language. And then when you're writing, it's taking the different small parts of um, what you've been recorded. So it has to um, attach every sound to a letter or to a group of um, letters that is creating a sound, that is creating a phoneme. And yeah, I ended up reading Wikipedia pages for hours because I had so many different sounds uh, into, um, yeah, spe specifically science uh, Wikipedia pages, different, uh, yeah, all the spectrum of the, of the French, basically with the 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 to, to all those beautiful sounds that we have. And yeah, then it was, um, yeah, I came up with uh, this, um, this voice. It's very short, okay, it's three seconds, um, me presenting the voice in, a, with the, yeah, with the algorith algorithm speaking um, as me. So I'm just going to play it. It's in French, obviously. Bonjour, je suis la voix de synthèse de Melia Roger. Okay. And um, yeah, after all those hours, the, yeah, the algorithm came as a, yeah, as a clone. And this installation, the, the Voices Voices, is a text that I wrote for this voice. And I wanted to create a space for doubt. So the idea was that in one and more speakers, you have the artificial voice. And in the other one, you have um, my own voice made from a recording that is imitating the artificial voice. And the idea was to not know which one is which, a bit as a game, but also as a uncanny feeling where you don't know uh, f which identity is real or fake, like it's kind of a <clears throat> it's kind of a vocal deep fake if you think it as a 
yeah uh, as a parallel with the with the image you know where you you have a so realistic um yeah like clone that it's it's very hard to to distinguish what is real and what is fake and depending on where it was shown i had different um feedbacks from from the audience for example my mom came also uh, to see my master project and for her it was really obvious uh, which voice what was which and um, for an audience that didn't know me personally it was super hard to to make a difference but you could hear some artifacts on some words or not and also the um, because it was made from concatenative synthesis, I kept all the mouth noises um, also in the um, in the artificial voice, but it was bit they were a bit different. And then I realized that actually the the mouth noises are what is the most organic um, in my voice. You know, it's those small sounds that make. Um, yeah, that make the um, the recording even more, um, yeah, realistic, very close to the body and in the installation. So it's a five speaker installation. There was one speaker, which is the point of a junction between the artificial part and the organic part, where I just kept the mouth noises of my organic voice, you know, synchronized to it as a yeah as a point where it's actually the most organic sound of the voice but when you listen to it in solo it sounds like glitches or like you know like error sounds from a bad um compression things so maybe we can just listen to those mouth noises um okay i don't know if you can hear So yeah, to me it really sounds like a, yeah, like artificial artifacts, things that are not supposed to be here. Like when you listen to the voice recording, you you don't hear that they are present in the recording, but when you take them out, it feels a bit artificial. But when you listen to them solo, it feels artificial. Like I mean it has this ambiguity uh in the sound itself that was really yeah, that for me was really important to create the the place of the doubt um, between what was the yeah the organic and the artificial. Um, yes, maybe I move on to a piece which is a bit the junction <laughs> um, of um, what was interesting uh, for me in this voices that uh, carry emotions but also carry an identity and what later will be more linked to field recording it's a piece that i did last year um, in zurich uh, for yeah just a, a common show that we had in a rindenmarkt and we had a four channel setup and i wanted to yeah, to create a link between the city soundscape of where the exhibition was and some comments that I, I found um, online under those um, um, mon Dieu, comment ça s'appelle en anglais? Uh, VMC, you know, like the um, air conditioner, um, yeah, just ventilation sounds. 
Um, the idea was first to find a link um, between a sound which is be like um, scientifically and un and um, environmentally very heavy, like uh, the air conditioners. They they worldwide they represent ten percent of the global electricity consumption, which is so big and at the same time so many people find them so relaxing to listen to and i really like this ambiguity between something so dirty for the environment and at the same time very uh yeah very intimate that helps people to to sleep or that feel relaxed and i try to find to find um yeah, a link between those, um, yeah, th those sounds and those comments that I found online. So I went under hundreds and hundreds of videos um, of YouTube best AC sound ever. You can hear 10 hours, uh, you know, uh, air conditioner in a hotel room and stuff like that. And I gathered different comments uh, that were the most intimate, you know, that people were really sharing their um, personal stories and stuff. And I, yeah, I combined those comments that I had recorded uh, by a single voice and some ventilation sounds that I was finding in the city of Zurich. And this piece was combined with a sound walk where we were listening to the ventilations next to the exhibition space. And the idea was to, yeah, to listen to, to them with a lot of uh, care and kind of empathy at the same time to really have the, the conscious that, that they are here, that they are present in the soundscape because usually you know you don't pay attention to them but there is always like this uh this, this ventilation that is uh that is around and uh, when you start also just caring to listen to them you know that you 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 just care to to this little part of the soundscape that is n never heard that is here but it's never heard and then it might bring a, just another um, perception of the whole environment. So yeah, that was a bit the, um, the context. And yeah, I'm happy to share the beginning of the piece. It's 13 minutes long, so maybe we just hear the, the, yeah, the five first minutes. And just to give you also um, a small detail on how I was processing to create the piece, you know, and it's the same for the mouth noises. I was using this tool called Isotope. I don't know if you if you know it. We use it a lot in cinema to take out very specific uh, frequencies or specific parts of the sound. It's really like a Photoshop for a spectrogram, basically. And in Isotope, you can either, you know, un like you can delete all the mouth noises as you can you know just keep them and in this piece i did the same with the hum you have a tool which is called dhum and the hum the, of uh, of the city like those ventilation was uh, was also something that i was trained to keep so i made some yeah i was using this dhum to keep some um um yeah like made like main frequencies or go for harmonics in some ventilation sounds in order to extract the musicality of it that was the musicality of the people who liked uh, those sounds in order to yeah to feel relaxed and everything okay <clears throat> let's listen machines i don't i'm gonna start from the beginning okay I love this sound. It 
reminds me of going on vacation and being in the hotel room with the family, trying to get to sleep because tomorrow will be a fun day filled with awesome things. Sounds so nostalgic for some reason. I've been listening to this for about three years now. Machines have a natural resonance that appeals to the subconscious. I feel like I'm in a blizzard and in a nice cozy infirmary laying down and drinking hot chocolate. Also, it sounds like I'm driving somewhere for 10 hours. I'm in the only room without windows in my house. So when the AC goes off, it's so deadly quiet that it makes my ears ring. I would even turn on a fan so I could listen to it while going to sleep. I remember going on a cruise once, when I was eight years old, and listening to the ventilation in our cabin made me feel very safe for some reason. This really takes me back. My family had an old one when I was a kid. I love the sound of that thing. It's not the same for me without the room, being at a freezing temperature, the hotel room smell, and my younger brother rolling around in his sleep, pushing me off the bed. It reminds me of the sound that I grew up with. Epic childhood memories of overnight stays in motels during summer vacations, complete with the intermittent muffled noise or chatter from guests in neighboring rooms or walking past outside. This is a very good sound.
White noise makes me feel warm inside. That makes my life a little more bearable. I like that it's loud and capable of blocking out a good amount of neighbor noise. My grandfather used to work night shift, so during the day when he had to sleep, he had a small electric motor hooked up next to the bed, and he'd run that motor during the day just for the sole sake of making noise like this. Okay, maybe we continue. Um, yeah. Mm, which was um, what, what was really nice also in the sound walk, which was linked to this piece. Um, that was we had so many different hums. You know, like some very high, some other very with a deep, low uh, frequency, quite vibrant. And it was really nice to see um, that the wish to listen to all those hums were making us taking different paths that we that would that we would usually take, um, like go behind restaurants or. We would listen in a like on s'accroupi, like we go down to 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 listen to the air ventilation that are more at the bottom of a store. Or and <clears throat> I had some uh, visitors from from the area, you know, that really know the the neighborhood, and they would yeah they were really surprised to hear those sounds for the first time in the streets that they they take every day. Because they never give the attention to this part of the, yeah, of the landscape of the, um, and yeah, I think it was it was really beautiful to, to see how they had a feeling to, go in yeah to to dive a bit into the, um the intimacy of uh, of the street you know like something that you would never really yeah remark um, yeah and yeah this work is a bit uh, the the starting point of uh, yeah or, or I mean the the link between the the use of the voice and the the emotion also that the text can carry and the because the voice is very neutral but at the same time all the text all the comments from from the youtube are really intimate you know like they they share stuff about their families about memories of their childhood and everything and um and yeah uh it's um it's a nice connection i think with the with how this which emotions are carried by the field recordings by them, like themselves you know like how do they meet uh, in the installation of course now we hear a stereo bounce but uh, in the space it was also really nice at some point there is no sound at all so you could hear the ventilation of the space itself like also just the, um, we had some heat at that time of the year it was in in december so we had a uh, yeah, just a of something that was actually yeah changing the temperature from from the room and um, yeah it was um, mm, I don't know a piece of the of the research puzzle that was quite important I think to to create bounds uh, yeah between spheres of uh, concepts and uh, interests basically um, I will just continue. 
with um, another piece called Humeur, which is like, I mean, the title was chosen as it's, um, it's Humeur, you can translate it as moods um, in English, but also the, um, you had, uh, you know, this uh, antique conception of the different humors, the different fluids uh, that uh, you have uh, once uh, one body, like the tears, the blood, uh, the, um, the, the pee, and uh, the, the last one, something related to fear. I don't remember the, the name, or I think I, I don't know it in English. And this was a piece that was made for a river. Um, I was invited to do a site-specific uh, installation in the gallery next to a, a not it's not really a river, a fleuve. Yeah, it's it's a river. It's a bit more strong than a river. <laughs> um, and I wanted to find back the different memories I had uh, with the um, yeah with, with this river which is called the Limat in uh, in Switzerland. It's uh, it's going from uh, Zurich to to Dietikon and a bit further. And uh, the gallery was in Dietikon. It's a small city. And I tried to go through the river, you know, continue the path of it and find back some yeah, some memories or some emotion that were linked uh, to the places. And I had a, a very strong memory where I almost drowned um, in the river. And this was the starting point also to find back some other things that, yeah, the water, the water sounds were bringing back to me. And so the piece is a mix between the different recordings that I was doing by the river, but also the writing down of those memories. I brought you some uh, different photos of what I was doing it. Um, also using, uh, this was my first <laughs> homemade hydrophone. They were not sounding so good. But yeah, it was, I don't know, it was uh, something very personal where I tried to, yeah, to link the the soundscape of, uh, of this path. And yeah, that what, what was the sounds and the places were bringing back to me and also recording the act of writing. And then in the, um, in the exhibition, we could see the place of the, where the, the souvenir, where the memory was written. So this is the path of the river. Do you see if I move my mouth, my mouse? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so I just make a rough uh, drawing, uh, and you could you could see. So you, I had four different locations, and in the space in the room, it was a it was a sitting with four speakers, um, but with different uh, setting. Like one one was very high, the other a bit lower, one completely like on the floor and was a bit resonating in uh, this acoustic, um, I don't know, couple, li little, uh, like it, it was creating a different sound in, in this place and, and another one that you don't see on the picture. And each speaker was linked to, to the place of, uh, of where the, the memory was written. And in the piece we go we travel, we follow the path of the river. So we go from one one memory to another and the sound of the writing is guiding which at which memory we, ha we are. And the other speakers are just creating also the, the background or I also made uh, yeah, some recordings of uh, just, yeah, very in the last part uh, of the, the last souvenir is very close to the to the gallery, so we could hear the bells uh, of uh, the the small church, which is uh, really next to the gallery. But at the same time, you could hear them inside, and you had like this 
porosity between what's inside the outside and uh, what is um yeah what yeah it it was it was fl flowing <laughs> a bit a bit like uh, it was very uh, aqua very aquatic <laughs> if i may say so um yeah and so we made different kind of postcards where on the on one side you had one memory on the other side you had the location and the audience was just able to take also the the memories with them i wrote in french manually and we had a german translation and yeah we can also listen to a stereo bounce of it
Okay, I stop now. Um, but yeah, what one challenge of this piece, which was first, you know, thought to be dealing with the with the water, like with the with the sonic presence of the river, um, was that um, actually the river is really it's a gap um, in the in the sound, like when you are close to it. You can barely hear the sound of the water, but actually it gets all the others, all the other, um, yeah, sounds, all the individuals or the birds or anything very, very distant. But there was some very strong elements, especially at the trains or some, um, a lot of industry uh, are built by, by the river and and changing the, the landscape. I don't know if you, like there is uh, on this picture, we, we can see, you know, like it's, it's very ambiguous how you have this very calm walk where you have all those trees, but actually behind there is this um, this factory and be, uh, a bit further than this part, there is a huge highway. And, and yeah, um, for me, the, um, the the different moments the different recordings i have made on this path were also yeah i tried to to use the the sonic material as a as a link with the um, different emotions or the different memories um yeah now i feel that in the stereo extract it's not so clear <laughs> but uh, at least you have just um yeah, you yeah you could hear the the voice of the the oh la la, the sound of the writing, and the paper and the and the present. There is one sigh like um, of me, which I think is the only one in the whole piece where you actually hear a bit of the the human presence, except of the paper, and and yeah, um, for me, I really took this opportunity to know more. Uh, this path and to to go back a bit like a therapy <laughs> thing where I yeah I wanted to connect again to to those different locations and again so for this exhibition we we made a sound walk by the river as well where um, with an audience actually now on the picture we see quite uh, young people I think they were the youngest with me <laughs> they are my friends <laughs> But actually, the the other other ones were more like old people, like over seventy, uh, who came for for the walk, which was also very hard for me because my German is so bad. And um, and yeah, this is a Swiss German uh, context. And and yeah, it was beautiful how they all you know really took the time to to change the shape of their ear by for the, so we we hear a bit more the the river or like that we go very close and we go further and then they go back in the installation and they can make connections uh, with the sound that, that they can hear of the recordings and then they go outside and suddenly they put attention to the trains or you know different parts of the soundscape that they didn't hear before that it was just unconscious and yeah i had just a beautiful moment with the old old guy uh, who was telling me that focusing on the listening really made him forget his pain that he has on his arm and uh, and yeah it was yeah it was just beautiful to see um how just a yeah, normal audience from a gallery uh, is not you know trained to hear or just uh, they never they never listen basically and um and so yeah this was a really nice excuse to go outside and and just take time and and see how this water is creating a, a complex system of um yeah of sounds objects that are just uh floating around um yeah and i will just share maybe uh yeah another work before we go to more field recording of just um of just sound without any exhibition context or whatever 
Um, this was um, an extract. Um, yeah, I mean, I made, I tried to make this uh, small series where the where I let the um, the landscape making the recordings. You know, where I'm just actively being passive um, in the way that I'm listen or the way I leave the microphones. Uh, for example, in this one being taken by the water, or there is another one where I just lean on under a tree and I leave the microphones moving with the wind. And the idea is that they are like the wind or the sea is making the sonic experience. Like it's, it's yeah, it's the actor, it's the boom operator of, uh, um, of the recording. Um, I don't know if this is, very logic if i show this now but uh, this just act of filming ways of listening was uh i think also a step and uh, i knew also that you you had a uh, felix bloom as a as a speaker and for me his work was really important and and yeah i think every time i doubt you know of uh, everything i'm i'm doing or like when i'm not sure of like when when I do things that uh, yeah there there is no one to tell, to tell me what to do and I'm just a bit lost I always think like okay he made it like it's possible <laughs> to to yeah to to live from it and to um, to to experiment with uh, with all of that and uh, and yeah I think this now all the the, the things that uh, I will share with you it's. Uh, I think this is more my current practice uh, of everything that I've been um, trying to engage with more um, environmental problematics uh, that are coming ob obviously more political as well. And this is just a soft um, entry with this video. I think it will lead to a website where I will be able to put play. Yes. Woohoo. Okay. So maybe we watch a bit of it. Uh, attends. Is it? Okay. Do you hear it like that? It's okay. Okay, it's a problem if you cannot hear, if you cannot see. What I will do is just that I share the link on the chat and you can just click on it and we meet in five minutes. If it's okay for you. That sounds great. So yeah, just okay. click on the link everyone and um, go back in five minutes.
Maybe we go back slowly. <clears throat> Let me know if I continue. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, as you were writing, Mark, yeah, there is a form of, of meditation, or at least to have a attentive listening, which is, um, I mean, I think there is the need here on those videos to show the listener. So we have the, we, the active presence of, um, of the body also in the landscape. And um, it focuses the attention for sure. What I really like in this video is how the, yeah, how the water is slowly taking the microphones and that is, um, yeah, playing the, the tide. Um, we will continue with um, the piece that you were mentioning before, uh, where we also have some active players. Um, it's, um, it's an extract of like 12 hour recordings that I made um, with my partner, Grégoire Chauveau. Uh, we work a lot together and yeah we wanted to record some frogs in a little pond uh, next to my parents place you see here the pond and we attached uh, here okay if you really really zoom <laughs> you can see uh, you can see the the little microphones here and there and here you have um um, camouflage, you know, like a heat, like um, how do you how do you call it? Something you know that is the colors of a uh, of uh, the the ground and the and the leaves, etc. So you don't see it like the military, you know, uh, colors. And yeah, we wanted to record to record the the frogs that we heard uh, the last the night before. And so we attached this large uh, AB stereo, so with uh, two Omni mics. And yeah, we used the fence as a mic placer. <laughs> and yeah, we were super surprised on the next day with what we got. So I'm just gonna share without saying much more we don't have to listen it's a total it's for a bit more than four minutes uh recording but uh, we can listen just to the to the beginning this is around maybe uh 5 30 6 a.m yeah in the morning uh, why i don't hear oh.
Also with the you know with the natural players like to to have um, an external element here the the birds um, that is uh, playing uh, the, that is giving the attention to 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 the sounds and what I found really surprising in uh, in this recording is the musicality of the of those metal fences it really feels you know, like it's almost a, a double bass, uh, which is just played um, by the birds. Uh, so they come here in the morning to to drink. They make some, um, I mean, they, they go and, uh, you know, they make uh, some uh, go and go back, des allers-retours, uh, with the water and their, and their nests um, uh, in an old house. Um, and yeah. Um, I think it also yeah it reveals quite of a of a musicality also in the in the soundscape and what what is the link you know with the um, with with the um, yeah the, the work that I did to see before it's uh, also to have access to a certain intimacy of a um, yeah of, of a landscape. And here it's almost like, uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to to hear this if we are not around. And, uh, and it's really precious to to be able to, to have yet to testify of uh, of those sounds that are appearing just next to our door where we are sleeping. And also just a technical thing the, um, so the microphone the omni mics you know they are the the clippies and it's actually a microphone which have a tiny uh yeah clipper that you can just put on uh, yeah, different surfaces and that is the solid uh, connection like the solidary connection between the the thing that is holding the microphone and the fence that is also allowing them the sound of the metal to to go through the microphone so it's not a contact thing but also it has this um yeah this vibration which goes through the metal and uh, that's why it's it's a uh, it's a bit on the um, at the limit you know between something that you could hear with your ears and something inside uh, of this fence which is uh, normally inaccessible um in the same um uh, how do we say démarche on the same uh uh disons, uh initiation of uh, just uh, going outside and uh, record sounds for so many hours and then just uh, taking some samples of um of yeah some extracts of a uh, of a of a part of a soundscape that uh, we wouldn't be here to to testify. Uh, I want to share with you uh, one of the last recording that I was doing, like maybe three weeks ago. Um, now between October and March, there are those common cranes that are that are coming in um, a lake. In France, for those who are familiar, it's the Lac du Der in Champagne-Ardenne. And they come like, I think over the whole period, they are at the maximum 40,000 cranes that come. And so they, during the day, they eat the corn uh, in the fields. And in the night, they come to this lake. And what you see on the picture to the right is actually the, the lake, which is uh, you know, it's drained. 
once a year and this is now the the time for i think one month you almost have no water and you have a very muddy um yeah yeah lake <laughs> whatever and here you see one of the um, feather and here we left uh i say we because this was uh, again with my partner mon coéquipier uh greg so we left microphones in this tree for yeah for the whole night and we chose the place also because it's a very it was an open field uh, as you can see the the tree is just on this side and and we had a super nice acoustic and we knew also that the cranes are coming they come above here and they they yeah the, it's on their way, basically, and we were also very close to a forest, so we have this mix um, location of something very watery, but also with um, uh, some animals that can be in the forest, especially in the night. Um, yeah, and yeah, I will just share this recording with you. This goes also just one. I don't know, one concept uh, uh, input with that is um, I've been really fed by the, yeah, the, the thoughts of Baptiste Morisot and Vincent Desprez. Uh, one is uh, from Belgium and the other is from France, them, who are writing a lot about tracking and ways to, you know, enter in relation with non-human entities, with, uh, with living beings. And this is really, um, yeah, important to me in my, in, my, in my imagination. So I've been doing some uh, tracking courses, you know, where you start to, you learn how to recognize um, traces of uh, animals that are just the, the prints or the feathers or uh, the different kind of poos that they do and just to learn to read the landscape with the trails and and this is completely changing the way i perceive um, a landscape also when i choose a location to put my microphones outside it's really it's really different now uh, i see different yeah i see different uh differently than before and yeah, this goes also with uh, just learning, you know, the 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 calls of the birds or learning the calls of mammals as well, and being actively, yeah, learning actively the more biological knowledge that I don't have, <laughs> and to to have a better understanding understanding uh, of. Yeah, of uh, of the natural with the big uh, <laughs> voilà, uh, around us. Yeah, so you will hear an extract which was actually quite. Uh, it was not so late. It was around nine thirty p.m. Um, yeah, so of course everything was dark already, and I let you listen. We we called it dialogue but it's a bit uh anthropocized view it's more of an interaction but as you will see it's um it's also a dialogue yeah okay
Okay, just so we continue uh, a little bit and I have time to share other example. Uh, I mean, you can listen to it on the on my SoundCloud <laughs> if you want uh, later. It's around 10 minutes um, of this fox. So it's a fox and uh, common cranes that are um, yeah, having an interaction uh, here. Um, Mark, do we still have time to listen to some things or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Then I will just continue with this sonic intimacies, like those very, those recordings that give us access to, um, yeah, to, to, to a hidden part, something that we wouldn't hear, something that we wouldn't expect. And I think one of the first interest so I, I go back a bit in the time but i mean this was very long not long time ago i was recording as you can see um uh, i was just recording with a very simple D tascam uh, dr05 uh, during lockdown this uh <laughs> this piece of uh, dung uh, it's horse dung and I was garden, gardening with my mom and there is really one recording that struck me and I, I could hear it also with my own ears and I just share with you um, a couple of seconds. Uh, So this is the the sound of the bugs uh, eating the the dung, you know, the the horse uh, shit uh, that that we use to make as a fertilizer for for the ground. And yeah, this this was really a surprise for me. Like I could really hear the bugs doing this sound with my ears in this little uh, basket, you know. And it was super surprising to see how loud. Uh, they are like it's not even with the contact mic or anything it was really really loud uh, from their part and and yeah this is also one example of um, of a whole sonic world uh, the, that we yeah that is uh, giving us a, a totally different perspective of the interaction of the non-human interactions that are just uh, around us. And for this, I highly recommend the work of uh, Marcus Meder. I don't know if you had uh, him uh, on board uh, at the CRISAP, but uh, he's a Swiss artist also based in Zurich, uh, doing his PhD for the, the soil um, acoustic uh, communication. And uh, he's really focusing on what are those sounds you know and which animals make what and it's really fascinating and but he works a lot with contact microphone and this was really just with the ears it's it's fantastic uh i found to have access to to this kind of um yeah but it, at the same time you know i don't want to romanticize like oh wow nature is so crazy it's so beautiful oh poor humans uh, we are always in front of of our computer and we should better go in the forest it's not um it's not that it's um also we are hearing some you know some insects eating poo i mean it's it has a i mean for me it comes also with um with the dark ecology uh, concepts that we have with uh, Timothy Morton or, you know, all like other philosophers that are bringing more nuances to, to all this like fascination that is so easy to have, especially with uh, Baptiste Morisot and Vincent Desprez, like, uh, like philosophers that are also amazed, you know, to have this uh, intimacy without the proximity with the tracking um, etc. But, um, but yeah, at the same time, it's very raw. Like for, for example, this recording is very raw. It's very uh, cru. It's um, it's something 
yeah, it's the dark, <laughs> it's the dark side. Um, I don't know. And I would love uh, to to also have a record. I think Chris Watson also did, uh, you know, a recording of um, of the Griffons eating uh, like a dead animal. This kind of yeah, yeah, it yeah, just uh, just having more yeah sounds of this of this dark nature might yeah might bring a bit this uh, this nuances to to what i'm saying um but just continuing on this i i've i have here also um it's kind of a dark recording too <laughs> of this a recording of this jellyfish uh, that was i found this on, on the beach uh yes on the west Part of France, and it was starting. It was starting to be eaten by those sand fleas. And I just want to also, yeah, listen to this very close-up recording. We can hear also the wind through the cable and some waves sometimes. Um, yeah, before we go with the question, I wanted to share with you one last work. Uh, tac, tac, tac. Uh, which is also a film. Um, I will just send you the, the link again, so otherwise we won't be able to, to watch it. Uh, it's six minutes long, but you can watch it. Um, you can watch it maybe on your own. Um, it's the last uh, work I've been really working on, um, which was also leading me with yeah with a book and a, and a small exhibition, etc. But I think this is the yeah the the combination of everything you saw before except the voice quoique it comes uh, it, it's coming um but yeah like this very close and intimate recording i i wanted to you know give more uh this uh this action of uh, of yeah who is who is playing and how do we 
can really put the sonic attention between our ears and another being. And I tried through touch to to give access to those very tiny sounds using microphones that I put on my hands, as you can see here, or sometimes I'm really close on my finger or inside my hand, like there are different setup um yeah of uh, of those recording and it's it's very close recording of course and the idea of uh, this film was to experiment those uh, yeah different ways of uh, listening through the hands and through through the bodies through this very very close listening also using the body as a performer, as a as as a guiding microphone with um, with care and empathy, and I came up also with uh, I think a, the, the those words this um, this idea that is um, guiding the world, which is this echo empathic listening, and this was also leading to to a publication. I go a bit quick on that. We won't have much time. Um, the publication is called Intangible Otherness, and it's exploring the, yeah, the different ideas that I was mentioning uh, to you before, and this practice and what it does also to, yeah, to the self. Uh, this was, um, I mean, this work was uh, also, um, like, I mean, it was a device, like basically the, the audience who came to, to, to see the, the film where I first did it during a residency, the audience was also able to wear the microphones and explore a path that I, that I had kind of curated uh, for them. And they, they could also just go outside and touch different things. The idea was not to, you know, to, to tear down uh, things or to, to smash uh, leaves, etc. It was really to give caress, like really gentle touch um, to, to surfaces and enter in this very close listen to this very empathic, eco-empathic listening to, to those other beings. And it was also fed up with the, the notion of in between of Salome Berlin, uh, of, yeah, of this gap between what remains um, yeah, between two entities, either it's a, it's a volume fed of sounds, either it's a, it's a, yeah, it's something that through touch we reveal through the recording, and yeah, this was really much uh, yeah fed by by all those um, those ideas, and I don't know if we have time to watch the movie now, but maybe you watch it later uh, with headphones, obviously. And just wanted to mention that the, this work also, I, I did it once as a performance where Matthias also was uh, here <laughs> to help me with the, the headphones of the audience. Uh, everyone was, yeah, were, was he wearing headphones and I could guide. It was more of a meditation where I was wearing the microphones and guiding the, the listen. Also here, for example, you had a very large stereo image with the two arms that are separated. And where the, when the hands are more closer to each other, we have a more mono um, listening experience, like impression. And yeah, um, I think this is really, you know, what's, yeah, it's the, the point, the starting point for what comes next. Um, if I go a bit quicker with the book, like, uh, yeah, what comes next, like how, how do we continue also as a, you know, as a artists, how do we manage to, to create those works? How do we collaborate with others? It's also, I mean, it's a life research, right? It's like you're always evolving in your thoughts in also what, how the exterior environment is, you know, having some impact on you. Of course, now, I mean, for me, I cannot, I cannot see myself, myself dealing uh, back with them. Um, I mean, I have to deal with the environmental questions. It's a, uh, it's a matter also of, uh, uh, of just keeping sounds that are disappearing. And I wish, you know, that through, for example, this 
publication or with the film, with the performance. I do a lot of workshops as well, like uh, how can I transmit and inspire also for more empathic listening and and just it's not bringing awareness. It's not, I don't have the, it's, it's not that, it's just inspire or open the ears of an audience that is usually not listening, um, basically. And I, I don't know uh, for you, but, um, but uh, I know it can be super scary to just finish the studies and not knowing how to start or where to go. How do we collaborate with others? How do we, how do we finance uh, all of this? And uh, I think we are very, I mean, for me, I feel very vulnerable. Uh, I feel like the things that I'm doing, they're, they're precious, you know, like uh, it's, I put a lot of myself in, the, in every piece, in every recording every time i go outside and i decide to to spend like three nights out and uh, and record this this bird or this thing that that i'm interested it's a commitment and um and it can be very scary <laughs> and yeah i just want Shiba, to share also this this part this is also part of the work you know like not knowing and 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 i think yeah, we are all built with those experiences, with uh, all those little pieces that we made in schools outside. Oh, we have a gallery maybe asking, or we have the opportunity to do a, a performance, and then it's the start of a new thing, and that's how it grows, etc. But um, but yeah, I wanted to also share this part of uh, of the practice because because it's here. Like uh, this is you know contributing to yeah to to the creation of uh, of new works or different contexts of where it's shown or how it's shared with the public etc um and voila maybe on this we can start with the question before we end <laughs> does it sound good for you mark or yeah i'm, I'm in total darkness here i should um put a light on but i kind of don't want to because it's nice um, yeah, maybe I think we should go to questions because we actually have to finish in 10 or 15 minutes max. So yep. um, we can do that, but like, just to sort of say thank you to start with, because, um, that was a huge amount of work to, to share and, um, and to go through. And I just wanted to say thank you because it was really um, wonderful. And so let's, there's, there's a question, a, a few questions have already been answered, but there's, um, yeah, just to go back to the artificial voice uh, thing. Um, I mean, there is a Ukrainian, um, I think it's called Respeecher. Uh, Respeecher. Speecher. Whoop. Where you can clone your voice and make also trans um, cloning, like using. For example, the algorithm is uh, fed by someone else, but you put your own identity on someone else's voice. But this costs at least like 20,000 to make the voice. And then you can do as many as you want, but it's not something like that. And all the tools that I've been trying online, they are so bad. <laughs> it was so awful. Uh, you can, if you go on my SoundCloud, you hear the different tryouts that I did. And I mean, this was two years ago, so I think now they might be better, but still it was so bad. And so when I heard the voice of Irkam, it was like really astonishing how accurate it was close to, yeah, to, to my voice. Um, but this is completely different process. And, but the, the researchers from Irkam, you know, they are accessible. It's just that for now it's in French, I think that, um, but I know, like, for example, Philippe Pareno, you know, he made the voice of um, Marilyn Monroe, like on some specific projects, you all like you can always. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think in the field of science and research and uh, yeah, vocal synthesis, you have you also, yeah, you might have some stuff in England, but I don't know, uh, to be honest, what is the scene of artificial voice in England? It's, it's such an interesting topic, isn't it? Because of um, 
both like the aesthetic and ethical kind of consequences of, of it are just very um, broad, uh, sort of frightening and um, yeah. interesting and imaginative all in one go. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's quite cool that you cannot reproduce anyone's voice like that. It can, it's a super dangerous tool, like, uh, you know, we can make people say anything. It can be a... Uh, if it goes in the wrong hands. I don't want to go in conspiracy theory and stuff like that. When I was doing my thesis, I had so many videos also talking about that, you know, and there was one guy, you know, uh, on Reddit who was um, yeah, posting uh, free software to, to do this. I don't know if it was really working or not, but it, at the time I was doing my research, he was banished from, uh, from the net because it's too dangerous. So, um, I think the best is to, if you want to do that, you, you have to get closer to research team that are dealing with those topics. Otherwise you will have access to, um, yeah, to marketing things that have nice voices and stuff like that. But, uh, but, uh, and the microphones on the barbed wire, they are very, you know, c'est les clippy, uh, clippy, voilà, cela. Uh, it's the same capsule as the, um, as the lum. One of many respeacher. This is one of many. Voilà, respeacher.com, exactly. Great. And there's um Catherine. So for intangible otherness for the book, I'm actually looking for a publisher. <laughs> so if you know anyone, like I made a self-publication. I only have three copies left. So uh if you're if you're interested, I can maybe I, I, I send you a copy in a Christ app, but I think Salome has one. So maybe she can share it with you. Um, yes. And otherwise, if you know any <laughs> anyone uh, who might be interested to at least see uh, the content and uh, voila, and imagine maybe a, a future for, for this text and photos, etc., hit me up because. Um, it would be nice, I think, to to have it uh, also augmented. Like since then, I, I also want to bring new things in, in the. I mean, I want to make a second version. But voila. And uh, hi, Martin. Uh, no, the full piece is not online yet. <laughs> it was uh, just for you. Ta ta ta. Uh, I can send you the the link of my Dropbox. For now, it's uh, I didn't publish yet. I still have time, but um, here you can listen to it all. That's very kind. Very kind. <laughs> can I ask a question about your? You mentioned um, film sound design. I think right, very early on, or you, you just briefly touched upon it. Is that did you have a background in in doing film sound and sound design? Is that right? Yeah, I studied in the cinema school at Louis Lumière in Paris. Um, yeah, it's a very technical school. Like we enter after two years of anything, but we we have a very strong science background uh, in math, uh, electronics, uh, acoustics, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, it was, you know, it was also before Me Too and stuff. And it was... Uh, old time. <laughs> um, I think now I would have a totally different uh, experience of the school. We were, it's, uh, yeah, we are 16 per class. We were only two women and we were not helped by the other squad. For vraiment, it was, uh, yeah, I also, when you have more creative mind and you are in a technical school, it's uh, it's not so easy, you know, to find the right way to 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 do your stuff. Like I didn't study art, and so I it's just intuition things that I do, and then yeah, I had that's why I also did my exchange in the master of uh, transdisciplinary studies in Switzerland, and this was. For me, it was great. I mean, it was the first encounter with the sound studies, with you know all the. Um, I mean, yeah, also your your thoughts, Mark. You know, like uh, all those people that yeah that put words on uh, on very intimate listening experience. That uh, for, I mean, there are stuff that uh, that were 
it's just instinct. I mean, I, I also studied music before and everything, but uh, when it comes to sound, it's, uh, it's not the same ear at all. And it's so much connected to, to the emotions and, uh, and yeah, it's also, uh, um, I think a whole path to reconnect with the, yeah, with the, with those emotions. Yeah, that's well, also yeah. interesting. And can I ask another question about the, um, the river work? The, um, yeah, I think you said yeah. there was four locations that you chose. I, I love that work. I think it's, it's made, well, I loved all the work, but that was so such an interesting piece. But and maybe I missed this. But did how did you choose the four like locations? I what? chose them because I had strong memories in them. Yeah, yeah. I had one. Um, yeah, where after like I. You know, in, uh, in Zurich, like the river has a very strong current and we go on those gummy boats uh, where you're just floating. And there was one time I uh, completely panicking and I found myself under the water. And uh, I was with uh, someone at the time that was, you know, he was not helping me at all and was super mad at me going like panicking. And I just wrote this memory, for example, and I went back to where I stopped afterwards and, you know, took the breath out and being like, oh, my God, what just happened? It goes so fast. And, you know, you're it can, it can it's super dangerous, like you don't realize. But yeah. And so and this was the same with the with the different memories. Um, this was the strongest one. I had another one more in the forest where I had just a very strong bond uh, with a someone where we were stopping and we wanted to record some bats. And so this is the moment in the forest um, where we just, you know, put down the lights and it was very dark and, you know, some impressions like that. And even though you are very close to the water, you don't hear it. And it feels, I don't know, it's a very strange um, atmosphere. Uh, so yeah, some very personal stuff. I don't say that it's, it's not, very interesting, like what I'm saying, it's not very interesting, you know, those memories, it's just impressions. And I think this talks to a lot of people, like uh, something that strikes your mind or the first time you, you yeah, you have a, an experience like this and it, it can um, bring back some, uh, some memories of other people. Yeah. yeah. I've got an alarm going telling me to stop, but I'm going to ask one more question, um, which was about the final work, the Intimacy of Lichens, which is such a great title and it looks wonderful. Um, I was intrigued actually about your performance in that piece and like how, <clears throat> like did, do, you have, do you have a score for your movements? Is it improvised? Like what's your actual kind of like bodily and um, sort of, yeah, like how, how do you perform in that work? Like in terms of your intention? Um, like I, I see the postures with the with the trees and what's going on. But I wondered, like, is it is it choreographed? Is it like you know what, what's the kind of um, yeah. the intentions and um, planning behind it as well? Um, so actually, for this one, I really wanted that the audience is not seeing me at the start, at the beginning, and then that I'm entering in their you know they were sitting, so they were like a place where they could see me when I enter this way. And then I was guided, I wanted to have different textures. So I mapped a bit the, the area where I knew like, this is very dry, this is a uh, very uh, anthropophonic sound with plastic. What is the sound of a leaf? Can we hear the difference? I also had the sound of, uh, there was a thing covering the audience. I had these sounds. I had some things very dry. I mean, it was it, the the guide is the ear basically, but I, I rehearsed it before. It's not improvised. I knew which way and what I also just simple ideas that I wanted to say. I was taking some sentences of the book. Um, also, just uh, yeah, talked very closely in the microphone. You know, I was whispering, so I had the microphone scan. I was just whispering very, very closely and guiding the audience through the through the listening experience. Also, so they like I didn't do this <laughs> uh, like that, like I was expressively asking them 
if they hear the difference or not. It was more, uh, well, it's, it was a guided listening. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. But uh, on next Wednesday, I'm performing for the first time with uh, other musicians. And this will be a totally different um, well, uh, rendering, I think, because I, I will go through them, like around them. They are playing also something very loud or very quiet. So I, I also have this sonic space to do some very close touching things. And then now my plan is to have an aquarium also for feedback uh, things and stuff, because the audience won't hear with the um, earphones, but with the um, with the speaker, so it's a completely different setting. And then uh, putting the the hands of, in the aquarium without water, but just different props, but using them. I even have, look, that's all. I bought uh, those, uh, <laughs> those red stuff, <laughs> so we can really uh, see them. And, and the idea is to put the, the microphone as a, as an augment, um, it's like, uh, yeah, you're a cyborg, basically. It's an augmented body where the, the hands are your ears. Um, yeah, it's nice, no? <laughs> I like that a lot, yeah. Uh, well, good luck with that new iteration. I wish I wish we could see it. Um, we're going to have to finish. We have to get, we have to stop, unfortunately. But um, thank you ever so much. That was really, really wonderful. And um, thank you inspiring and all sorts of things but yeah thank you thank you very very much and um yeah we'll we'll see you i'm sure here there and everywhere and it would be wonderful to if you're passing through london at any point to let us know and um maybe we can do something more expanded yes it would be super nice and uh and hello to uh i see some familiar names and so thank you everyone for joining it's really nice of you Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye bye.